we have uh, done an, a thorough review of the comments that come out last week about Tanner Pearson. First, the most important thing is Tanner's health and his well-being going forward. Obviously, there's been setbacks here, which is unfortunate, and we all feel bad for him. When I heard the comments last week, the it was comments that I hadn't heard before, and not that I hear everything that goes on around here, but I felt immediately that it had to be looked into. So I'm not a medical guy, I didn't get involved with the medical things. Uh, what I did do initially was to go to all the people that had been dealing with Tanner through this process, everyone, and ask them if Tanner had expressed any concern about his, how his situation had been handled. And I couldn't find one person that, uh, that was told that it wasn't handled properly. So the next step was to go to the people that work with those departments. I have Dr. Bill Regan here, who's been with the Canucks for over two decades, a highly respected doctor. He's full time with us now. So I had him go through the process of what he deals with. And also Dr. Harry Cece, who we brought on last year to observe our medical and strength and conditioning staff to see if there were any changes or what we could do to improve it. And uh, so he's put together the new staff. He's familiar with all those people. So what I want to do now is to let Dr. Reagan speak to what he has found in the review, and then Harry can speak to what he has uh, observed and then we'll open it up to questions. Thank you, Jim. Uh, thank you all for coming. I have, uh, in, the, in the course of doing this review for Jim and the Vancouver Canucks organization, I provided a timeline for the management of Tanner Pearson and his injury. And after that, I put together a brief synopsis of just the way we do business with the Vancouver Canucks. But I would like to begin first, uh, and if I prepared this report, so I would like to begin first by acknowledging that my top priority and main concern is Tanner Pearson's health and a safe recovery. I also respect his right to privacy and confidentiality, therefore any comments from this point are going to be general in nature. So to begin, I watched, like many of you, Hockey Night in Canada on Saturday night. And during the course of the uh, intermission, Kevin Bieksa described how, in his experience, player injuries are managed at the NHL level. So please allow me a couple of minutes to uh, expand on his thoughts. When a player presents with an injury, it's a team physician responsibility, and in this situation mine, to evaluate the player and determine whether conservative care alone will suffice or whether more aggressive management strategies may be required. If, in fact, outside opinions are required, I will source out contact experts in whatever field that needs to be addressed. These independent experts will often reach out to other colleagues in the field and then present their opinions to the player, the risks and benefits, pros and cons of conservative versus surgical intervention. And at this point in time, the player will then make a decision, along with his trusted um, ally and uh, agent, etc., as to whether to proceed or not. After all of this process has been in place, the player or the team physician could ask for yet another opinion, which is granted because it is, it's their prerogative and ours. The next step is if any player undergoes surgery by an outside independent consultant, the player then becomes that consultant's patient, as he is my patient with the team. After the surgery is successfully completed, the third-party independent content expert then is intricately involved with the direct rehabilitation protocols that are inherent with the surgery completed. And at that point, 
the training staff will implement his wishes or her wishes. Let us not forget that we as physicians and training staff on all 31 NHL teams meet annually with the NHL management to discuss protocols and changes thereof, which may have occurred over the past year. The Vancouver Canucks organization follows these principles. In other words, we are in direct lockstep with the NHL on how play players' injuries are managed. This is how the injury to Tanner Pearson was handled. Nevertheless, no matter how excellent a patient's care, including following best practice guidelines, complications do arise. I will tell you that in this case, the surgeons involved in the care of Tanner Pearson have had many years of experience and are internationally known. On a personal note, I would have any of the surgeons involved in his care operate any one of my family members with no hesitation. Having said that, in Tanner's case, there have been two setbacks stalling his recovery. Tanner has been reviewed by three outside consultants who have in turn consulted with other trusted colleagues outside of the organization in order to obtain consensus as to how to best move forward with his care in order to ensure the best uh, outcome. Uh, finally, to close, I would like to thank the Canucks organization, and most specifically Patrick Alvine, who is the person to whom I directly report to. And for all his support and concern he has demonstrated regarding medical care of his, of his players. Patrick Alvin has had a lot on his plate this year, as we all know, but every time I call, he picks up the phone and offers any assistance he can for the management of his players. Thank you. I would like to now turn over the microphone to Dr. Ceci to talk about the rehabilitation techniques employed. Thank you, Dr. Bill. When it comes to rehabilitation and return to play, uh, there are many steps to it. So it's not you have an injury and then all of a sudden you're directly back to play. There are many steps involved, whether you are a professional athlete or just a fan watching at home. For example, if you hurt your hand, we're going to start with simple steps such as, you know, is the wound healing? Are we then able to work on range of motion, grip strength, and so forth? So whenever you hear the term return to play, it's not necessarily, oh, an injury is good to go, you are back on the ice. No, there are many steps to follow. Now, I know there have been some comments on to our new medical staff, but to kind of settle this here, it's not a new medical staff completely. We have Dr. Bill, and we have also kept several of our other former staff. Now, the Vancouver Canucks brought me on last season to observe and give my independent review on how the human performance department and also the medical department was functioning. And over the off season, the club has decided to make some changes and I was brought in to also help find new staff, which I did closely with Patrick as well. I didn't want just people who are good enough. I wanted people who were the best at providing the best care we can give all the players, but also when it comes to strength and conditioning and also sports science, and when it comes to the rehabilitation of all players. So my team has a vast amount of experience, hockey and also various other professional sports. So there's full confidence from myself, from Dr. Bill, management, and also the players. I do speak to the players regularly, and I ask them directly, do you have any questions, concerns, what can be done to make what we are providing you even better? And so far, all the feedback has been great. They are fully confident in what we do and thankful for what we are giving them. Uh, you mentioned setbacks. Uh, what were the nature of the setbacks, and how many surgeries has Tanner actually had? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, due to the, uh, the confidentiality and privacy concerns, I really can't divulge that, unfortunately. Is, um, I guess a curiosity from our perspective is that how did a four- to six-week injury morph into something where Tanner's not going to play the rest of the year. I mean, is there, is there some way that we can at least address the fact that it's gone from four to six weeks to season ending, and why? 
again, uh, due to privacy concerns, I'm not going to go into details. However, he's had, he's had two setbacks, and that has led us to the place we are today. Have, uh, I don't know if you can answer this one, Jim. Have you heard from the NHLPA? I know it was kind of concerned about the process here. Have, have they approached you at all, the Players Association? About not yet. Not yet. Um, I've heard that they, they're meeting today. And uh, so if, uh, uh, you know, if they decide to take a look at this or the league, uh, you know, obviously we're open to it. If there was any wrongdoing, we want to get it right going forward, okay? But based on our internally here, you know, we're comfortable with the way things have been handled. But having someone else come in and look at it and getting their opinion would be fine. Uh, Dr. Cece, just to, to confirm, are, are you full-time with the organization or are you in more of a consultant capacity? I'm more of a consultant capacity. So um, if, if you're not here daily, take me through the decision-making process. Who's ultimately responsible for the medical department and these decisions? The ultimate decisions are always going to be held with Dr. Bill, as well as any of the specialists who are involved in the care of the actual injury itself. The human performance department of the therapist and also the strength and conditioning to help rehabilitate the injuries, that is all done through the guidance of the specialists and Dr. Bill overseeing that as well. So we have multiple checkpoints and also, you know, having group discussions on what is the best way to handle uh, any injury and also how to help have that player return a safely but at a good pace. Jim and, and doctor, um, I don't think your answer is going to play out well with your season ticket holders and hockey fans. When players get injured and if it's a season ending injury, in the past we've heard what it is if it's a breaking, broken hand or a broken leg. This is a very contentious inch issue. You know when words like this get out, it can poison the well in the hockey world. Are you concerned that you're going to have players who may not want to come here because of what's going on with this injury? No, I'm not. Uh, certainly, we're not, uh, we're not happy with what's going on. But for the most part, these injuries have gone according to the course they take. And just because we've had one where we have this kind of a setback, I don't think it should be viewed that, uh, that that's going to happen all the time. And that's why we're talking to you. I get what you're saying. People want the information, but there's laws. And there's laws in Canada, there's privacy laws based on, on uh, medical care. And if we could tell you, we would. I mean, it's on the tip of my tongue. I, I would like to tell you, but, but we, we would be in trouble if we did it. Can somebody speak and, at least to, sorry, Jim, to the, at least the prognosis for recovery? I mean, we know he's not going to play the rest of the year, but is he at a stage now with setbacks and procedures where you can forecast that he's going to be okay to play next season? I wouldn't conjecture any answer to that question at this particular time, unfortunately. Complicated still for you as well, Jim, because you've got a player who has another year left of his contract, who's also at an age where with the trade deadline coming up might be of value to some other team as a veteran. And how does that complicate matters for you even from that side of the ledger? Well, we have a lot of complicated matters and related to the cap and things like that. But th this is not something we think about now. This is about his health, getting him back to be in 100%, if that's possible. And, uh, and hopefully the right things were done, you know, and, and if they weren't, that, we'd, that they're changed going forward. So this is, this is not a concern of mine now. There's, there's other things to deal with uh, as far as the cap and things like that, and uh, I don't think that I should be worrying about Tanner at this point other than his health. Just to follow up Jay's question, and, and Jim, you said that, that uh, this is just one case, but I know that Brock had a hand procedure and, and the wound opened up there, and I, and I believe there were some concerns last year from Jason Dickinson's camp about maybe a, a, either a misdiagnosis or something along those lines regarding a hand injury there, and now also Thatcher seems to have gone beyond his original timeline that, that 
uh, we were told when he first got hurt, do you, do you worry about kind of a pattern of things that don't necessarily go as originally planned and, and that might be a concern to agents and players down the road? No, I don't. I don't. Because in Dickinson's case, there was never any indication of a hand injury. He played through an injury, but it was a long ways from his hand. Okay? And, uh, and with what Thatcher's dealing with, that's, that happens to a lot of players with the injury he's dealing with, and especially the position he plays. Okay? And we're not going to be in a position to hurry him back. We want him to be 110% when he comes back. And even when that happens, with the injury he deals with and the position he plays with, you know, he, he's, he's going to have to prepare himself properly for practices and games. So, you know, we, we always deal with these injuries. I've, as you know, I've been around a long time. And just because there's a timeline set for a player, it doesn't mean they're going to hit that timeline. Uh, just with Thatcher, um, you know, is, is there any kind of an update on what we're looking at with him going forward here? Well, the best I can give you is we feel that he's he's progressing fine, and uh, that's uh, that's what we hope for. We we hope to see him back here in the relatively near future, whatever that means. Jim, two questions. I want to read you something that was said by season ticket holder. And it's a sentiment that I'm hearing more and more from, from, from our viewers and from hockey fans in this province who are diehard, who are fully invested in your hockey team. Quote, just so, so done with the Canucks, not even emotionally engaged, just feel they are not an organization or a well-run organization. Zero integrity or sincerity in anything that the organization does. That's from a season ticket holder. Yeah. Your thoughts? Well, I don't agree. And uh, certainly they have the right to their opinion. And, you know, that's unfortunate. Season's ticket holders are very important to us. Uh, have the utmost respect for them. But I don't agree with that. Okay, I want to ask you a hockey question now. Um, get away wait, from, wait, get, can wait, we get hold away from injury stuff? Oh, okay, wait, okay. Oh. Are we finished with the two doctors? And then I'll stay okay. so you don't have to hurry. You, you oh, can... Sure. Yeah, no worries. Any? With regards to, I have a question related to the initial topic of the press okay. conference. Okay. Jim, with regard to the review that you conducted over the course of this weekend, um, did you solicit the opinions of Canucks players and are you confident that they have confidence in the staff as assembled in the wake of this uh, incident? I, I have not talked to many players. Patrick does. <clears throat> Patrick talks to the agents. Dr. CC talks to the players probably more regular about the care they get. And based on all the feedback I get from that communication, it's very positive. They like the new staff. They feel they're being taken care of very well. But if you would like to speak to it, Harry, go ahead. Yeah, no, there's been no change. There's been full confidence in the staff. Um, one thing to add is that the whole staff has been vetted, even the previous once you've stayed behind as well, because I wanted a, a very special team that provided very special skill sets to try and minimize or fill any gaps that there were from previous seasons. So we actually do work closely with the NHL, even in putting a team together, as far as what their medical standard mandates are for certain staff as well.